We have none other than UFC 173's main event bantamweight challenger for the title. TJ Dillashaw is on the line joining us. TJ, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. Great, man. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your schedule. I know you're actually getting ready to train right now, and we really appreciate you taking the time to join us. Oh, no problem. Well, let's see here. You're coming up just weeks away from facing Hanan Burrell for the Bantamweight Championship. How has the training gone for this camp, and are you ready now for that big stage? Absolutely, definitely ready. I mean, training's gone perfectly. Uh, I've had a great camp. Um, I couldn't ask for more. You know, timing's been, been good for me, and uh, you know, I'm excited that everything's coming together at the right time. And, of course, you've been working a lot with Dwayne Bang Ludwig getting ready for this. And what does it mean to you to have him in your corner? I mean, being the, it's going to be his last time that you'll have him in your corner as part of Team Alpha Male. Yeah, I mean, it'll be the last time him coaching Team Alpha Male. It won't be the last time him, him being in my corner. Uh, me and Dwayne are going to continue to work with each other after he uh, leaves the team. Um, he's going to fly out for my fight camps, and I'm going to go cross-train with him a little bit. But, uh yeah, it's gonna, it means a lot for uh, him to be here every day watching my training and uh, for the timing of, of him leaving before this fight. It, it's funny, TJ. During um, On the UFC's website, they do like a little fight history uh, of all the fighters. And for you up there and their little skill breakdown, they have you know your summary as a wrestler with ground and pound. But if you look at their little pie chart, when it comes down to it, your skill is striking, they're saying. Now, that's basically it's done on the last three fights, and that goes to show what Dwayne has done as far as, you know, added to your striking ability. Do you feel that that is what you've become, more of a striker than a wrestler? Um, I feel more comfortable on my feet these days, it seems like. Uh, I do so much work with Dwayne that it just comes natural to me now. Um, you know, the work you put in, it, it, it's, it's showing off, and, and Dwayne's very good at it. Um, obviously, I, as you said, I came in as a wrestler and felt more comfortable always on top and making sure I was winning, but now I just feel so well-rounded that I'm really comfortable on my feet. Sometimes I almost rather be there. It just depends on the fight. Now, when you got the call to face Hennon, what was your initial thoughts? Um, excited. I mean, it's what I've been training for. Um, every every day I go to practice and, and Dwayne's picking me apart is to be the best in the world, and the, the best in the world is Hennon Barrow right now, and... Uh, that's, that's the, the main goal is to be him. So, you know, just just uh, know that those are your goals and they're getting this close and, you know, it's kind of surreal. He obviously has this crazy win streak going. He's got 33 fights where he's unbeaten. Do you ever look at that and say, okay, well, how do I become the guy to, to change that? How do I beat this guy that's gone on this 33-fight win streak? Um, yeah, I mean, you definitely look at that, but, uh, it's, it's the fact that I got to put everything together at the right time. I mean, I just got to be the better athlete that night. I feel like I'm just as well-rounded as Henry Burrow. I just got to, I just got to show that and improve it that night and be the better man, uh, which is going to be hard to do. He's a very well-rounded fighter. He's always brought his A game. Obviously he's been on a crazy win streak. And so, uh, like I said, I just got to put all my mixed martial arts together at the right time and, uh, put the pressure on him and show that I want it more. TJ, two of those wins that Barrow has is against your training partner, uh, Uriah Faber. How uh, how instrumental has Uriah been with you in this camp? Um, You know, not only this camp, but just in general. I mean, helping him out, getting ready for Barrow, helped me out a lot. And then, uh, you know, he just always gives me the pep talks that he wants me to be the fighter that I am. He thinks that uh, I could beat Barrow just by fighting the way I fight and uh and, you know, not being too worried about what he's going to bring to the table. You know, everyone gets in there and scared of what Burrell's going to do. He didn't think he's too powerful. And, and um, you know, some, some of the guys are beat before they even step in the cage with him. So just go out there, believe in yourself, and uh, let loose. After the first fight that Uriah had had with them, obviously you were cornering him. Uh, we know about that, and we know that you worked as one of his primary training partners. But ahead of this camp for yourself, uh, how did you prepare for Burrell, let's say, for the things that you know are going to happen in the fight, like his low leg kicks and those types of things? Um, You know, uh, Dwayne's done a great job of working with that, not only just in the fight camp, but we've been training for Burrell for, since he's been the champion. I mean, me and Dwayne have been training to beat the best, and he's it. So I've been training to 
counter leg kicks and stay away from his spin kick and, and you know know what combos he throws and just uh you know be aware of it but don't be too overly cautious because it's going to slow down what I do you know but just uh throughout the year I've been naturally just drilling those things and now they're just going to come natural to me when I get in the cage. And if you felt any additional pressure being the after you were named as the main event and being the first like time that you're headlining a pay-per-view, has that at all gotten to you? Or what's your main reaction to having that spot? No, I don't, I don't feel any extra pressure because uh, you know, I'm finally going into a fight as an underdog. I mean, every fight I've, I've gone into has been a favorite. Yeah, sure, this is a little bit more attention on the fight, but you know, that's what I wanted. That's what I'm in the sport for, you know, not only for the goal of being the best in the world, but financially. Um, so I'm not nervous about that, and also I'm not nervous about the fight because, like I said, I'm the underdog fighter. I mean, I get to let loose and have some fun, and you know, being having been the the favorite, that's when, that's when you get the added pressure that everyone, everyone's expecting you to win. You know, they you got you got added, you got the added pressure of that. So I feel like I get to actually let loose and have some fun for the fight. We are talking to T.J. Dillashaw, who's facing Henan Barrow the end of this month. I think, what is it, UFC 173 for the bantamweight title. T.J., you talked about finances just a second ago. Um, what about when this is all said and done? Fighting's over. What do you have set for the future? You know, that's something always on the back of my mind. I don't really know right now. Um, the first thing I do is build my name as big as possible. You know, I've worked a little bit outside the cage with some companies, but, uh, you know, the thing now is just uh, give the best I can at the sport um, and just get my name out there and prove that I can be the best in the world. And, TJ, a couple more for me. I was curious if uh, you got the chance to work out with Martin Campman when he came down there last week for Team Alpha Male, and what do you think of him as a possible head coach of the Team Alpha Male, if that should come down to being the choice that you guys take on. Yeah, I did get to work out with Martin Kim, and he's a cool dude. Um, I like the fact that he's been around the game and, and knows MMA, and he's a very technical guy. Um, you know, just like any fighter, he's going to have to take a little bit of getting used to be a head coach instead of a fighter, be on the other end of the mix, and, and start picking people apart for someone else instead of his fight. So, technically, he was awesome. You know, uh, great guy, super nice. And uh, I'm excited to see what he's got more so if that works out. Um, you know, it's just going to take a little bit of time to get used to being a coach, I think. And just my last question, uh, you really, in my opinion, only have one UFC loss because we're not counting the uh, Sun Sal fight. But uh, yeah. <laughs> I was I agree. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was curious, you know, what did you take away from that, that loss to Dodson, and how did you grow from that experience? Well, I came into the fight against Dodson feeling invincible. You know, I just hadn't been ever really hit and just kind of implemented my game plan every time I stepped into the cage. And obviously, I didn't have that many fights. I had four before Ultimate Fighter and then one three wall on the show. Um, so, I, mean, I was only seven fights in when I fighting Dodson, but I was in the back of my mind, back of my mind invincible. And uh, I came down with the blazing guards down a little bit. You know, I learned to be uh, a little bit more of a cautious fighter, I guess you can say, with uh, my defense. I learned to uh, stay a little more tight on my stand-up. And, um, you know, it just anybody can get beat at any time. Well, man, we want to wish you all the best heading up here. UFC 173, you're fighting Hanem Burrell for the UFC Bantamweight Championship. Uh, best of luck, TJ. Oh, I appreciate it so much. Thank you.